the liquidity trap. Let's say you have a central bank that keeps expanding the money supply, leading to the artificial booms and busts. If this keeps happening, eventually the structure of production will get so screwed up that banks will simply stop lending out until the recession passes. This is what happened in Japan and is what is happening in the U.S. today. Banks are given lots of money, but they correctly perceive that the market is messed up. And so they just sit on the money until the structure of production reintegrates. Right? And when this happens, the banks then release those funds, those, and this leads to um, a, another artificial boom and then a bust. And of course, this is exactly what happened in Japan and why following the 1991 to 1992 crash, Japan has had a series of little boomlets and bustlets. Right? The banks were given a load of money, but the banks weren't lending them out. No, Japan screwed up. There's nothing to invest in. All right? The bad investments need to clear out. Okay, And so what would happen is the bad investments would start clearing out, and then the banks would release a bunch of money. And this would create an artificial boom, and then bust. Right? And so they, the banks would sit on the money again. Right, The economy would clear out again. Then the bank would release out the money, another artificial boom, and then a bust. Right? And, this, and these little boomlets and bustlets will keep going until the bank finishes releasing all the money, and this could take decades, Right? And once the banks finish releasing all the money, then the Japanese uh, structure of production clears out. Then it starts reintegrating. Right? Then it can start to grow again at a at a healthy, sustainable pace. And that's what's going to hap have to happen in the U.S. And uh, depending on how much money the banks in the U.S. have right now, it could be you know 20 years of little boomlets and bustlets until the U.S. can start having long-term sustainable growth again. Now, as of this writing, the U.S. banks are sitting on gobs of cash and not letting it out. Congress wants to force the banks to lend it out. And uh, it, it would be interesting to see what happens, because if even the banksters, the people who create all these problems, even if they can see the imprudence of lending, uh, uh, the imprudence of lending out the, the funny money, you know things are really screwed up. But of course, politicians, you know, as as disconnected as as the banksters are, uh, politicians are utterly impervious to facts and demand more disintegration and more deracination. And this is exactly what the Keynesians want as well. The Keynesians believe that the problem is that everyone's preference for cash holding is going to virtually infinity, right? Now, the Keynesians have a problem. Why are pe people still spending money on things like new clothes, cars, computers, food, etc.? Right. The banks are sitting on gobs of cash because they know investment won't, won't pay off, but why are consumers still spending as much as they are? Right. Keynesians have to draw arbitrary distinction between investment and consumption. Right. Keynesians believe that, that people's ca uh, preference for cash holding is going up to infinity. They, 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 that is, they just want to hold on to these cash notes in times of uncertainty right that that's how keynesians explain the banks not lending out the money right but the problem is that doesn't explain why people still spend cash on things like food and rent and stuff like that right however the austrian theory of the business cycle explains perfectly well why banks aren't lending out the money right because even banks see the uh, structure production is all screwed up there is no liquidity trap Right. I'd call it the the monetary wall, right? The point at which the market is so screwed up by Keynesian policies that even the banksters refuse to inflate. And so why is there a financial crisis? Because the financial system pursues Keynesian monetary policy. And and Keynesian monetary policy likes to uh, people Keynesians it has become kind of a slur word nowadays, and so you get a lot of people calling themselves monetarists and Chicagoites, right? Uh, but but if I mean, it's the problem is the ex artificial expansion of the money supply, and if they want to artificially expand the money supply, um, you know, then they're going to lead to the booms and busts, and that's the problem. And so I just call the all those people Keynesians, right? Milton Friedman, Keynesian.